Hello and welcome to the Product Biz Podcast, episode number eight, Projects That Will Actually Make You Money. So I want to start out asking you, have you ever worked an entire day, but when you sat down to think about it, you end up asking yourself, what did I even do? I know there have been times when I'm journaling at the end of the day and I'm saying, gosh, I was so busy today. I worked all day. I barely took any breaks, but I just can't tell you what I actually accomplished or what I actually did today. Chances are, if you frequently feel like this, then your business probably also isn't in the state that you want it to be in. Most small business owners work all day without ever looking to see what they're actually working on, and they end up only focusing on a busy work that does not lead to more sales. That's because most small business owners think, if I work all day, then I'll be successful. But that's not true. It's a matter of what you work on, not how long you work. And being busy isn't going to grow your business, but being intentional with what you work on and where you spend your time. Are you ready to go behind the scenes and learn what it really takes to create consistent sales each and every month with your handmade small business? Join me, Monica Little, self-taught multiple six-figure small business owner and your product business coach as I give you the insight and inspiration on how to better run your business and increase your sales in ways that you may not have even been aware of, so that your business can truly become what you knew it could be back when you first started. Learn how to let go of perfection, overcome the fear of failure that is holding you back, and finally start taking action so that you walk away feeling like you've cracked the code on how to run a successful small business. You're listening to the Product Biz Podcast. So let's start off with the listener of the week. So as you probably have heard since I've been mentioning this at the beginning of each episode, starting with episode number 11, I will be choosing a couple of the five-star reviews that are left for the Product Biz Podcast and reading them for the listener of the week. If your name and your review is read and you send me a DM afterwards, I have some really awesome prizes that I'm going to be sending out. So just wanted to mention that right at the beginning, that if you want to be featured as a listener of the week and win an awesome prize, then please make sure to leave a five-star review. But with that, let's dive into today's episode. So one of the main reasons that I started Product Biz Academy is realizing how much of my corporate background and business degree actually helped me in business. These things that I learned throughout my like previous lives are just second nature to me. The things that I learned throughout my business degree and my corporate background, things that I thought everyone really knew, but I realized actually they were not really well known among some of the small business owners that I talked with. So you may know that I co-owned the Chicago Makers pop-up shop last year with my good friend Anna, and we worked with over a thousand small business owners while running the shop. We had over a hundred businesses across our three stores. We ran four local markets with over a hundred different businesses. We had almost a thousand small business owners in our local Facebook group. So we really got to know so much of the small business community here in Chicago. And when you start to talk with a lot of the small business owners, you start to see the same struggles that come up and the same questions that come up. And people would ask me how I grew plant-based beauty to six figures in one year. And to me, the answer was pretty simple. I took one project at a time and I mastered it. And I learned this from my corporate background. It's kind of been ingrained in me. When you work at a corporate job, you have day-to-day tasks that you have to get done, but then you have your one main project that lead to results that you are working on where most of your time is spent. And that really got ingrained in me, and I run my small business the same exact way. I spent an entire month 
building my plant-based beauty website, perfecting it until it was converting at a good rate and I was getting a good amount of sales from it. I spent an entire month optimizing Etsy, not just setting Etsy up and letting it go, an entire month optimizing it, perfecting it until it was giving me consistent passive income. I spent an entire month on Pinterest, learning how to use Pinterest, perfecting it until My pins were leading to consistent clicks and views and sales from Pinterest. I chose one project at a time and I mastered it. And today's episode takes project planning and breaks it down into an easy way for you to start setting goals in a way that will help you to complete your projects and actually make progress. Most small business owners run their business without ever setting goals. And you might be nodding your head like, yeah, I've never really set goals for myself. And a lot of small business owners end up looking to see what others are doing because they aren't sure what else to do. They haven't defined their own goals. So they see other small business owners selling at markets. So they apply for every single market they hear of, but it doesn't make their business successful. It only makes them more burned out. And if you think about that, do you want to be participating in markets for the next 10 years if that is where you are focusing your time and energy and making majority of your money if you haven't built your business in a way to get consistent sales from other avenues? Or these small business owners see others that are coming out with new products constantly, so they come out with products each month too, but it doesn't lead to much sales after the initial hype. And I want to ask you if you're nodding your head like, yeah, that's what I do. Is that also a long term strategy to be coming up with new products over and over and over? If you think about 10 years from now, how many products are you going to have? You could fill a basement. You could fill a warehouse if that is your current strategy. A lot of small business owners end up throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. They just work harder and harder every single day doing what others are doing, but it doesn't make them any more successful. And a lot of these small business owners that are struggling in this state think that they need to go faster. They need to hit the gas pedal. They need to do more, but really they need to take their other foot off of the brake. Successful small business owners who know that they have to treat their business like a real business. They have to slow down and learn how to build a business. They have to take their other foot off of the brake and set goals for their business and prioritize what they are working on. They have to try new things and take risks to grow. And successful small business owners like you know the dedication and commitment that it takes, but they also know that it is so worth it. It's worth it to be able to financially support yourself with consistent sales month after month. It's worth it to connect with more and more customers who love your products and keep coming back. It's worth it to be able to leave your full-time job or part-time job and focus on your business. It's worth it to experience freedom to live each and every day like how you want to. So learning how to set and accomplish goals is the first step to building a successful business. And I am so happy that you are here to learn exactly how to do it. So what I want to start with is understanding what is your sales goal. And a lot of small businesses have never thought about this, but you have to have a specific goal in mind. You have to have a specific number that you are working towards. This is just Something that is needed in your brain to know like, hey, this is what I'm working towards. This is where I'm going. This is how I will know if I'm successful, if I'm reaching the success that I want. This is what all the work I'm doing is for. You have to have that number in your mind. And if you've never had a number, then this is a time to think about it and sit down and think through what is the number of sales that I want in order to say, yes, my business is successful. So what is your dream sales goal? And let's talk about only the next 90 days. So in the next three months, if you say today is three months from now, whatever the date may be, and I am so grateful for the X amount of dollars I made in sales over the last 90 days, that should be an uncomfortable number, a number that kind of scares you, a number that allows you to say, yes, my business is successful. Now I can leave my full-time job. Now I can focus on my business entirely. What is that number 
that will allow you to feel like all that you've worked on has been worth it and brought you to this stage. That is the first step. And you have to have this number to know what you're working towards, to have that end goal, to have that finish mark. And then once you reach that, then you can make another goal that's even bigger than that. But you have to know where you're going. It's like driving a car, going on a road trip without a destination. You have to know the destination because then you know if you need to turn right or turn left and go on the highway, take this exit, you know where you're going. So you have to define this. And if you haven't, please don't just breeze past this and go, okay, okay, what's the next step? Sit down and figure it out and write it on a piece of paper, put it on your mirror, put it on your laptop, put it on your phone, have it in front of you so you know what you are working towards to drive you and to motivate you. And then what I want you to do is to write down why you want to hit your goal. What is the reason why you want to hit this number? And most of us I would say if you're listening to this podcast, then definitely you don't want to make money just to make money, just to like have it sitting in your house and to throw, you know, a a party of, hey, I look how much money I made. Most of us want to make money to leave your job so you can focus on your business full time to support your family or to support your parents, or to support yourself. Or maybe you want to have the freedom to do what you love and what you want to do with your time instead of being forced to do what you are obligated to do. There's reasons why we want to make this money. And this is so important because not every day is just fine and dandy with running a business. There are a lot of really hard days, and your why has to be there. As a reminder on those days when sales are down and you're busting your butt and you want to just give up, but you know what you're working towards. Because not every day is going to be magical when you run a business. Not every day is going to be just an increasing trajectory up and up and up and up every single day, better and better and better and better and and more and more and more sales. Things get bumpy. There's different levels to running a business. There's different problems and challenges and hurdles you have to overcome. But knowing that destination, what your end goal is, and knowing why you want to get there. Who do you want to support? What do you want your life to be like? What organizations will you donate to once you make this money? How will your life be better? How will your family's life be better? How will you support the economy? How will you support others and invest in others? Will you hire people and then you're supporting their dreams and their economic status? So why do you want to make this amount of money? And this is so important to know the feeling, the reason, the emotion, the the rationale as to why we want to make this money. We don't want to make this money just to be greedy and have money. We want to make this money for a reason, to make an impact, to help others, to help our family and to understand that and to have that top of mind and to just be reminded of that, that will keep you going. So once you know the dollar amount, the sales goal that you want and why you want to hit your goal, then I want you to ask yourself, where am I right now? How close or how far away are you to reaching this goal? On a scale of one to 10, if you had to pick a number, one being I'm so far from this goal, I've got a lot of work to do, or 10 being, you know what, I'm pretty confident I'm on the way there, I can do it. On a scale of one to 10, where are you right now? It's important to have this self-awareness because there's a lot of people who will have this pie in the sky goal and then when it gets time to doing work, they just don't have the self-awareness of, hey, you know what, some things need to change. And instead they say, oh yeah, everything's great, everything's great, and they just keep doing what they're doing. And if you're not reaching your goal, if you're not making progress, then something has to change. And we have to be self-aware enough to say, okay. This is where I want to go, but I'm right here right now. There's a gap. What do I have to do to to make this gap smaller, to get me to this goal, to reach all of these amazing things that I want to reach when I hit this goal? So now that we have that, now we talk about the projects that we work on to help us reach that goal. And this 
is where we break our work down into two different buckets. And if you listen to the episode about the chronic creative, that was a little bit of a segue into this. But let's talk about the two different types of work, the two buckets of work. There's operational work and then there's revenue generating work. Operational items are things you have to do to keep your business up and running, but they aren't necessarily making you any money. So things like making inventory, packing orders, dropping them off at the post office, paying your monthly sales tax, buying raw materials. These things are necessary, right? Like we need to do all of these things, paying our annual taxes. Like we need to do that. But on their own, they do not make you any money. You could go to the post office every single day, but if you have no products that were sold, you will be walking there empty handed. So the act of going to the post office is not making you money. Those are operational items, things that you have to do, but are not leading to sales directly. Revenue generating items, on the other hand, are things that you can do to make money. Things like marketing, marketing your products on social media on Etsy, on e-commerce platforms, sending out customer or wholesale account emails, reaching out to stores, anything that actually drives customers or retailers to make a purchase. So what I want to ask you, how many hours per week do you spend on operational items compared to the hours that you spend on revenue generating tasks? And this is something that a lot of people struggle with. They are stuck in the chronic creative, these operational items, and they're not doing the projects that actually bring in money, but then they're wondering why they aren't making more money. So can you see how it's a catch-22 right there? Like you have to be working on projects that will bring in money to make money. You have to do that. You can't stay in this zone where you're doing operational items and busy work and just procrastinating on the scary, uncomfortable tasks that will actually make your business grow. So you may have heard of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, but when you think of the 80-20 rule for running your business and the projects that you work on, 80% of your time should be on revenue generating items. And that means that 20% of your time should be spent on operational items. So if you aren't making progress with your business? Could it be because you are spending most of your time on operational items? So let's break this down, this 80-20 rule. How many hours per week do you work on your business? So we're going to talk through two examples. Someone who works full-time for their business, we'll say 40 hours, and someone who works part-time, 20 hours. If you work 40 hours per week on your business, take those total hours and multiply by 20%. That means eight hours per week. That is the maximum amount of hours you should spend on operational items. 20% of your time, if you're working 40 hours, that is eight hours per week. Now, if you work 20 hours per week on your business, you take the total hours, multiply by 20%. That is the maximum amount of hours that you should spend on operational items, which is four hours per week. So pick whichever one you're closer to, 40 hours, 20 hours, you may be higher or lower, but let's just think through these examples. Can you honestly say that you spend less than eight hours or four hours per week making inventory, prepping orders, dropping them off at the post office? The more time you spend on operational items that don't make your business any money, the less money that you make. This is one of the biggest things that I work with small business owners when they first join Product Biz Academy, getting them to focus on projects that actually make them money, switching their entire mindset onto what they focus on, what they work on, where their time goes. And if you have a long list of operational items that have to get done, if you're saying like, I get this, but my list of operational items takes up so much time, how do I stop doing that? How do I shift to working on revenue generating items? There's two things you can do. Number one, make your operations easier. Or number two, hire someone to help you. The thing is, you have to free up your time to focus on revenue generating projects that actually move the needle and push your business forward. So when I first started Plant-Based Beauty, I'm going to give you examples of both of those two options. 
when I first started plant-based beauty for the Heal and Glow facial serum that I make, I would literally drip out eight individual drips of essential oil into every single two ounce bottle. And then I would take this seven pound jug of organic moringa seed oil and try to pour it into this two ounce bottle. And I would spill the moringa seed oil. I would make a mess. I would have to clean the sides of the bottle and I would be so miserable while I was doing that. And if you think about how can you make your operations easier, I bought a large dispenser off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. I figured out the ratio of the essential oil to the moringa seed oil on a larger scale. I put the entire seven pounds of moringa seed oil into the dispenser and the right ratio of the essential oils also into that dispenser. And this dispenser has a spout at the bottom that I can easily pull the spout on and off to pour into the two ounce bottles. There's no mess. There's no counting eight drops per item, and I'm done in less than half the time, probably even less than one fourth of the time that it normally took me. So how can you make your operations easier? Where are you spending so much time and how can you make it easier? You have to take a step back and say, when I'm making my products, what's the bottleneck? Where am I spending so much of my time? How can I buy something or do something in a different way to make it go faster? And the second option is to hire someone to help you. If you hire someone for $15 an hour to do something for you, you better believe that you can make that $15 back by working on a revenue generating project. It's as simple as that. You have to value your time and bring in money by doing projects that are revenue generating. And a lot of people are super hesitant to hire someone, so they want to do everything themselves. But you are losing money by doing everything yourself because you're not able to focus on revenue generating tasks because you're trying to do everything for your business. What if you had someone who could drop off the packages for you to USPS? Would that save you an hour per week or two hours per week? How much progress could you make on a revenue generating project with two hours per week in your pocket? So that's what it comes down to. So now that you are going to spend less time on operational items, you're going to figure out a way to do it and you're going to focus on revenue generating projects. Let's talk about what revenue generating projects actually to focus on. So here's where you need a pen and paper just to do this little exercise with me. What I want you to do is write down every single revenue generating project that you can think of. Every single project that you're working on that's on the back burner that you've been meaning to work on that you started but haven't finished that will actually bring in money for your business. What can you do to make more money? Where can you market your products? How can you increase your sales? So what I want you to do is take this list of 20 projects and take the top three that you want to work on, the ones that will make the most money, the ones that you are excited about. And write those three on a new piece of paper and cross them off your original piece of paper that has the entire list. This new piece of paper with the three projects on it, this is your priority list. And the other list with the remaining items, this is your avoidance list. The key to accomplishing your top three projects is to avoid the other 17. You might be thinking, what if there are things on the avoidance list that I really want to do? Well, you have a choice. Over the next three months, you can be mediocre at 20 things and try to do them all and get mediocre sales and not make any concrete progress like we were talking about at the very beginning of this episode. Or you can be amazing at three projects and grow your business and increase your sales each and every month. Most people have so many things that they want to do that they never do a single thing well. The avoidance list is the secret to being world class. And that is actually an exercise and a quote from Warren Buffett. So I read a book, I remember what book it was, um, that mentioned this exercise. And Warren Buffett who invests in a ton of companies that have this massive potential, this is an exercise that he does with them. 
And like I said at the beginning of the episode too, this is exactly how I was taught in my corporate job to focus on one project at a time. This is what we need to embody as small business owners to make the progress and impact that we want is to focus on those three projects for the next 30 days, knock them out of the ballpark, get as good as we can on those three projects, and then move on to the next ones and take these steps as we build our empire and reach those goals. So if you're working on a million different projects, the thing is nothing gets done. How much time is spent bouncing from one project to the next with nothing to show for it? You work on one thing for an hour, then you jump to the next thing for 30 minutes and you go back to the other one. And before you know it, you're burned out with no real progress because a hundred different projects got started and none of them got finished. So people get stuck thinking that each new project or the next project is the next million dollar idea. And I had someone a couple of weeks ago come up to me and say, hey, like, what do you think about selling on Amazon? Like, do you think that's a good thing to do? Well, the real million dollar idea is the one you focus on, the one that you identify and work towards with dedication and commitment. So sure, it can be Amazon. If you want to sell your products on Amazon and you go all in on Amazon and you learn how to do it correctly and you optimize it, then yes, Amazon is going to be awesome. But if Amazon is one of the 20 projects that you're working on at the same time and you're not making progress on any of them, that's not a good idea. It's not going to be as impactful as you think it will be. People get stuck thinking that each new project or next project is the next million dollar idea, but the million dollar idea is the one that you focus on. It's as simple as that. But the projects aren't done until it's actually working for you. So people, for example, get set up on Etsy and they call it down like, okay, I'm on Etsy. This is done. I'm done. And they move on. But it's not done until it's actually creating consistent passive income for you. So if that means you need to go back and reiterate and tweak some things and learn a little bit more and adjust some things and figure out how to actually make it work, that's how you finish a project. So I want to make that distinction because a lot of people don't realize that. They just cruise through, okay, I'm on Etsy. Well, are you optimized on Etsy? That's how you define if your project is done. Am I optimized on Etsy where I'm getting X amount of sales per month of passive income and Etsy is a money-making machine for me? If you can say yes, then that project is done. If you can say no, it's time to go back to work and figure out how to get it there. So it's not a matter of working on everything. It's a matter of getting the highest value projects done, the top three, the priority list. It's a matter of learning to say no or not now to new ideas, new projects, new energy that gets thrown your way. It's a matter of being dedicated and committed to the projects that you say you are going to do and finish. And this goes back to integrity. If you say you're going to do a specific project, well, now it's time to beat your word and to get it done. So I want to ask you, with these three projects that you've outlined, that you're going to work on, that you're going to go all in with, is there anything getting in the way of getting these projects and tasks done? Are there any roadblocks getting in the way of achieving these three projects? And what can you do to clear the path to focus your time on projects instead of roadblocks? This is so important because we can outline the three projects, but let's make sure there's not things in our way that are stopping us from actually working on it. Now you have to carve out the time. Now you have to put in the work. And just because you outline the goal, the number and the why and the projects doesn't mean it's going to happen. You have to put in the work. And this is another part where people struggle. They have these goals, these aspirations, but then when it comes crunch time to actually do the work, they they get stuck. They don't want to do the work. This is where you have to show up. You have to show up for you. You have to show up for your business. You have to show up to make things happen. And this comes back to what does your goal need from you? What type of person do you have to become to achieve your dream goal? What qualities do you need to demonstrate? And if this is a new question that you are asking yourself, then go back to episode five, why working harder is not the key to success, to learn about becoming that next level version of you and who you really have to become to take your business with you to that next level. So with that, 
I just wanted to say thank you so much for tuning in to the Product Biz Podcast. And I would love for you to DM me on Instagram at Monica Little Coaching and let me know what your big dream goal is and what projects you're going to work on. And if this episode was impactful, I would love to hear from you and learn more about what you're working on. And if you enjoyed this episode, then make sure to listen to episode number nine, which is all about competing on price. So a lot of small business owners think that they need to reduce their price even more and even more and even more to get more sales. So I'm going to debunk that and show you why you should be charging premium prices for your products. And I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here inside the Product Biz Podcast. If you love this episode, don't forget to subscribe and to leave a five-star review. And if you're interested in learning more about Product Biz Academy, my signature group coaching program for handmade small business owners like you who are looking to create consistent online sales with their business, then go to theproductbizpodcast.com to join the waitlist. Doors are currently closed, but you'll be first notified when they reopen. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Product Biz Podcast.